Hi, I'm Jared from KTWU. Coming up, a segment from Sunflower Journeys. If you enjoy it, please consider visiting ktwu.org to make a contribution. In January of 2008, Barack Obama paid a visit to El Dorado, Kansas. The following January, he was sworn in as the 44th President of the United States. We witnessed the event on television at a National Historic Site in Topeka, and then we went down to El Dorado to learn more about his family ties there. Well, we thought it was obvious that with a National Historic event happening, uh, that this National Historic Site would be the perfect venue to uh, share that. And I think the, the same spirit that uh, you know, we saw in the mall at uh, in Washington, D.C. was evoked here in this room. You know, we had a couple hundred people, and that was exactly the kind of uh, thing that we wanted to share with the community here in Topeka. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. It's a story that began here in El Dorado when a young man fell in love with a young woman who grew up down the road in Augusta. He enlisted in Patton's army after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. She gave birth to their daughter when he left for war. One of his only trips, uh, one of his only uh, stays here in Kansas, he spoke at Butler Community College on Kansas Day of 2008, January 29, and that was also the same day that Governor Kathleen Sebelius endorsed him. And it was just, the energy was amazing over at the gymnasium at the college. It really was something I had never experienced before. There was an air of excitement. You, you can touch it. Sometimes you go to an ev event, not necessarily like this, and people are rather passive. But the people who were there were, were very engaged, very involved. It truly was an historic milestone moment and our students and the people of El Dorado, Augusta, can say that they actually have ties to the president of our country. What everybody talks about and what is truly, is truly exciting is that his, his grandfather grew up in, in El Dorado and his grandmother grew up in Augusta, which is down the road. And then the next exciting thing about it is that they were very involved in his upbringing. Barack Obama spent a large part of his youth living with his grandparents, Stanley and Madeline Denham, in Hawaii. He moved in with them when he was about 10 years old and was with them most of the time after that until he went off to college. This was during a time when his mother, an anthropologist, worked on projects intended to alleviate poverty by helping villagers in Indonesia secure small business loans. She'd given birth to Barack in 1961, having met his father when they were both students at the University of Hawaii. As he first stepped into the national spotlight at the Democratic National Convention in 2004, Barack Obama spoke about his parents. My father was a foreign student, born and raised in a small village in Kenya. Through hard work and perseverance, my father got a scholarship to study in a magical place, America, that shone as a beacon of freedom and opportunity to so many who had come before. <laughs> While studying here, my father met my mother. She was born in a town on the other side of the world, in Kansas. She was born, Stanley Ann Dunham was born in November of 1942 in Wichita. Well, the birth announcement goes into detail that uh, Stanley was uh, stationed at Fort Leavenworth and was planning to come home to celebrate with the family on the birth of Stanley Ann. After his daughter was born, Stanley Denham was shipped off to join the war effort in England. His wife, Madeline, took a job on the night shift at a Boeing factory in Wichita, where B-29 bombers were being assembled. Following the war, they lived in California for a brief period, as Stanley took classes at UC Berkeley before the family headed back to the Midwest, living in Oklahoma and Texas. And then in 1956, 
They were uh, recorded in our city directory as living on Olive Street here in El Dorado. He was, Stanley Dunham, was a manager of, the, of a local store, the Farm and Home store that was located on North Main Street here as a manager. And he, uh, I think they maybe were here maybe a year, if that. From El Dorado, the family moved to the Seattle area for a few years before heading on to Hawaii, where Stanley went to work at a new furniture store and Madeline got a job at the Bank of Hawaii. It wasn't long before Stanley Ann met the young man from Kenya and brought him home to meet her parents. In Dreams from My Father, Barack Obama talks about how they were married. There's no record of a real wedding, a cake, a ring, a giving away of the bride. No families were in attendance. It's not even clear that people back in Kansas were fully informed. In essence, this wasn't much different from the manner in which his grandparents had gotten married. From what I've heard, they met at some type of dance club, dance hall in Wichita, uh, where they were playing big band music. Of course, it was around 1940 that they did meet. I believe she was still in high school when they met. And they eloped prior to her graduating, from what I've heard. Although Madeline and Stanley's marriage endured, their daughters didn't. She filed for divorce after Barack Sr. chose to head off by himself in pursuit of a graduate degree at Harvard when Barack was only two years old. His mother later married another foreign student and the family moved to Indonesia. Within a few years, the second marriage dissolved and young Barack found himself flying back to Hawaii to live with his grandparents as his mother remained dedicated to her work in Indonesia. For his grandfather, Stanley Dunham, it may have felt like history repeating itself. He too had moved in with his grandparents after the unexpected death of his mother not long after his family had moved to Topeka. Ruth Armour Dunham passed away in November, I believe, November of 1926. She was very young, 25, 26 years old. And he, Stanley, and his brother Ralph, his older brother Ralph, moved back here to El Dorado to live with the mother's parents. And that would be uh, Harry and Gabrielle Armour. Even though I experienced some challenges growing up, Stanley Dunham graduated from El Dorado High School in 1936. He played a key role in his grandson's upbringing, but it was his wife who really left an impression on Barack, which he acknowledged when he accepted the Democrats' nomination to be their presidential candidate in 2008. She's the one who taught me about hard work. She's the one who put off buying a new car or a new dress for herself so that I could have a better life. She poured everything she had into me. And although she can no longer travel, I know that she's watching tonight and that tonight is her night as well. Now, the woman who Barack Obama affectionately called Toot didn't live to see her grandson win the election. She passed away the day before. Her husband died in 1992 at the age of 73 and her daughter succumbed to ovarian cancer three years later, when she was only 52. As he delivered his victory speech in Chicago on the night of the election, the newly elected president again acknowledged the importance of his family. And while she's no longer with us, I know my grandmother's watching, along with the family that made me who I am. I miss them tonight. I know that my debt to them is beyond measure. In addition to assisting with the display at the Butler County History Center in El Dorado, those involved with the Obama Kansas Heritage Project continued to collect oral histories and to develop a website that includes an interactive chart of his family tree. The museum also features exhibits related to the local oil industry, which played a prominent role in drawing President Obama's ancestors to this area. There's much more to tell about the family's history and the president's connection to Kansas. And the fact that he has five generations of family members that have made Kansas their home. It wasn't just one generation, it wasn't just the grandparents, but five generations have called Kansas home. That's not fleeting. That's not something to connect. That's part of who he is. Glad you could stop by to see a clip from Sunflower Journeys. There are more great local stories out there waiting to be discovered but it takes help from viewers like you and me to make it happen. Visit ktwu.org right now to make a pledge.